This is tutorial website builder content block part four using the content block in in the site builder. In this particular video we're going to be adding graphics to our site builder. Uh, we've already broken this one down into four columns and um, we've got a color scheme. So in this particular one I'm going to be importing in uh, graphics. So the way you put in a graphic is you click in the column that you want to put the graphic and wherever you want that graphic to be I want this particular graphic to be above this word body so I, I click my cursor right above the word I go to images and there are three tabs um, image library these are the images that uh, come with the site builder you can use any of these images they're royalty free one thing I would stress um, do not go on the internet and just pull graphics from anywhere um, most of the graphics that you'll see on the internet uh, of this nature are copyrighted and um, either you have to purchase a license to use them or buy them outright so I would not recommend going on just a random site and grabbing a photo and putting it on your site these however are uh, you do have the right to use if you mouse over them they'll tell you how big they are this particular one is 200 pixels by 300 pixels and to give you an idea of what that is that's 200 by 300 pixels so it's 200 pixels wide by 300 pixels high so we go back to images so you can use any of these graphics you can just mouse over it and see the size of it and see you know how big the file is um, all of these graphics have been optimized. One of the things you need to make sure that you do before you put any photo on your website is optimize it. There are some free um, photo manipulation tools on the internet. You can just Google uh, photo editing, free photo editing tools um, that will give you um, options for when editing photos to see what they'll look like once they're optimized. So you can choose uh, levels of optimization and basically what that means is if you mouse if you look at this photo the 200 pixels by 300 pixels it is 21 kilobytes uh, that's a relatively small graphic um, 21 pixel or 21 kilobytes is um, far less than a meg um, far less than a half an egg so make sure that when you're selecting photos that you select photos that have been optimized before you put them on the web now the second category here is my images and I've set up a folder here called test front page you can go through and set up pages and then you put all your graphics into those pages and it helps set up test front page as a gallery the way you do that is you go to upload and you mouse over or click on the uh, the gallery selections here go down to create gallery name it and then create it it's that easy uh, I set this one up as test front page I'm going to browse it goes to my computer I find the files that I want to upload select I can go back and grab more and you can see this one's only three kilobytes this one's only three kilobytes this one's 21 kilobytes and this one's 35 kilobytes now um, and it gives me a total of how much kilobytes my all my files are 
It also has this resizing tool. If you do stick in a larger graphic um, that may be um, larger than 1600 by 1200 pixels, everything on the web is in pixels, uh, just like your TV. 1600 by 1200 pixels, this is 1280 by 960. This is 1024 by 768. This is the default for this, uh, for this program. If you're doing a photo gallery, you probably want to even do less than that. You probably want to do around 800 by 600 or 640 by 480 for like a photo gallery. Um, these are already been sized, so I don't need to worry about formatting. All I have to do is upload them. Last one and upload. Okay, now my four images are in my test front page. Now there are two types of images here. This is a PNG file. A PNG file um, is different than a JPEG. If once I, once I import this, you'll see. As you can see, uh, when I import this graphic in here, I can still see the background of my site. So if I change the background of my site to uh, something, let's see, gray. Whatever I change my background to, I can still see it through my graphic. That is, that's what a PNG file will do. If I put in my JPEG, if I go back and I put that JPEG in here, It has four corners. Now if I go back and uh, let me go back and just grab something that um, should be a PNG but is not. Upload and this is just a random photo, so let me just find some random graphic. Most of these I have set up to do. Let's see. Wow, pretty bad when I have them all set up the right way. Um, can't even find one that, let's see. Okay, if I drop this on there, it's just set up as a JPEG. I'm going to have to resize it to get it to fit. Okay. Now, if I have a background on this, that's all you're going to see. It's going to leave a white, it's going to leave a white background around this logo uh, because it's set up as a JPEG and it's not set up as a PNG file. So if I go back and I get the actual PNG file for that logo, which I should have somewhere,
as you can see it doesn't have a background so it, it comes in without a background so that's the difference in the different the two different graphics uh, JPEGs versus PNG files um, when you're cre creating um, photos for um, just if you if you're doing a photo they're automatically more than likely they're going to be a JPEG so um, what you can do after you get this graphic in here is you can highlight it click on it once and go to edit image and if you want to you can resize it you can crop it you can rotate it give it different exposure you can uh, change the color a little bit you can add text to it mouse over replace or properties most of the time um, I just use the properties button if, because that's where you would align a graphic left right um, and then your content would wrap around it I'll show you what that looks like in a different one but for now what I'm gonna do is just create a border I'm gonna create a black border I want it to be um, it's gonna be one pixel now if I wanted to make it a thick line, then I can make it like three pixels. Now if I need to adjust the size, I can do it one of two ways. I can go back to the, the edit image and it will actually save a smaller version, or I can hold down my shift key and just move that graphic in to fit whatever I want it to fit and it tells me the size. Now it doesn't save it so if I need to recreate it I'd have to recreate the whole thing but if I know I'm just gonna put in the one graphic then it's easy enough to do it that way. So that's how you put a graphic into a column. Um, make sure that you set your column widths to accommodate whatever size photos you want to put in there. I can't move this photo to another uh, to another block so sometimes what we'll do is we'll create a block just for the photo so we'll put a so we'll put a photo in the block and then I can move it around if I need to move it to there I can do that if I need to move it um, over there you know so I have can I have control of where I can move the photo because it's not in a block with other information so you can set up as many blocks as you want um, just because they have this written when you when you click on a box it has click to add text image and more once I publish that if there's nothing in this box that doesn't show up on the internet um, it just it's just an empty space there um, in fact, a lot of times it doesn't even account for the space. So, but if you need, if you want to click it, if you want to delete it, then all you have to do is just go delete. Make sure whatever's in that box that you don't want to keep because once you hit delete, it is gone for good. So that's, that's how you can move a photo around. And that's about it.